Well, thank you for joining me today. Here are the people that commented on my last video. I love when people write where they're from. Jean is from Scotland. Um, Cindy lives here in Arizona. She lives in Chandler, which is maybe about an hour from me. And then um, Fiona is Australia. So thank you for your wonderful comments on my video and let's get started. Well, hello everyone and thanks for joining me today at Wynette's Crafting Corner. In today's video, I thought I would start a new journal and I'm going to use this old book cover. I just love it. I believe it's from the 1800s. I do have the pages that came with this book and it's beautiful rag paper. This was on the inside and I just hate that I'm going to have to cover that up, but I don't see how I can get around that. But what I've decided to do is use some of my fabric that I got in Italy. And I think I told you in my last video or so that I do have pieces of this fabric in my Etsy store. I believe they're 12 by 24 or something like that. Let me just look at that. Uh, that's about 11 and a half by 12. But I've taken a smaller piece because I just want to lay it here. And I'm going to cover this part of the book because I really don't care for, I'm, I, the, the journal is going to be Italian inspired and this is in German. So that's why I want to cover that. And it will also give a little bit of strength to the book itself. Let's see, how can I best do this? I think about like that. And then what I thought I would also do is bring in some of this lace that I got in Italy and put it down here and then a piece of this lace and maybe put it up here somewhere. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more then because I really want to be able to see um, more of that lace and I can bring this up like that. And then I'm going to also use some of this trim that I got in Italy. I did take a picture of how I wanted this all placed and I'm going to have to refer to that. Maybe this was like this and this was like this. I'll have to look, but let's go ahead and first start with this cover here, this piece of fabric right here. I want most of it to be over on this side. And I just looked up and apparently, you know, everybody talks about using PVA glue. And I just looked up on the internet on Google and Elmer School Glue is a PVA glue. So I'm going to try using that. We'll see if that works. So I'm going to first put this side down. So I'm just going to flip it over so I know where to put the glue. And then I'll spread it out with my handy dandy silicone brush. Just really squeeze this out. I guess I should have taken the, I could have taken the, uh, the lid off. It'll be all right. I'll just take a little bit of time. I love this fabric. It's very nice and thick. 
I think I said in that last video where I talked about it, it would be great for using it for a slow stitching over the top of it. Okay, that's probably good enough right there. And just take my spatula and spread it out. I want to get it in those corners there. Okay, let's see how that works out. Oh, I think that's perfect. Okay. And it feels like it's going to be okay. I don't feel it coming through the fabric. And I'm going to just do this little crease here. And then let's lift this up and do the other side. I do like this gold edging up on the top. Let's see, how far do I have to go? Probably about there, maybe a little bit less. So tell me, did you guys know that Elmer's glue was the same as PVA glue? I didn't know that. So how's everybody doing today? Today I take Finn back home, his mom and dad, my daughter and her husband and the family is coming back from their vacation. So I'm gonna miss that little sweetheart, that's for sure. And it was so funny. So in one of my last videos, I talked about putting a deposit down for, um, a dog and I guess I hadn't told my sisters that and they called me after watching my video and they said you're getting a dog we just found out by your you by your YouTube channel I said yeah I'm gonna get one I've decided now that I'm retired I've I've got the time to devote to a dog and okay I'm gonna have to wipe this corner up over here. I got to spread it out just a little bit too much. But to me, this looks like an Italian village. I love it. That book is dirty. Look at that. Huh. It's grungy. Okay. And I'm going to take my bone folder and go right in here in these creases. And before it dries completely, I do want to pull it that way. Yeah. Okay. I think that's going to be okay. Yeah. Let's just put that like that. And then we'll let that dry for a minute or two. Oh, love this, love this. Then the next thing I'm going to do is put this piece of vintage lace down there. And I'm going to just bring this over and run the glue. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for this. And I'm just going to put it on the back of the lace. I hope you can see that. Yeah, you can. This is just such gorgeous lace.
And whenever I look at this journal, it will definitely remind me of Italy. With these corners up here. Okay. And then I'm just going to flip it over and lay it down there. Oh yeah, that's adhering nicely. And then for this other piece, I think I'm going to also use Fabri-Tac. And let me just fold this up, see what it looks like. Make sure it's going to be okay. Oh yeah, I do like that. And um, let's see, I almost thought I was going to have it like this. I do like, I do like that. Let me just kind of bring that over and see what that looks like. I don't know. Or did I have it like this? I like this, I think. I love all these little straggly, straggly pieces of yarn or lace. I think that will be okay like that. I think I'm going to just do that. So let's bring this over and once again put some fabric tack here it may just kind of seep out i i'm not quite sure how to do this without having it seep out a little bit, I really want um, it to stay down. Let's just try that. Okay. Pick it up. Bring it over. And I'm just going to use this um, baby wipe to press it down. I can see this is not doesn't have any glue there. Yeah. Okay, like that. And then for the trim, what I thought I would do is bring in a piece and I did cut um, it on an angle and I thought I would put it here and bring it around to the other side. So let's just do that. Uh, let's see. Let's do the PVA again. Well, hmm. let's just try the PVA, see what happens. No. <laughs> Sorry for my indecisiveness. Let's do the Fabri-Tac because I know that will definitely hold down. I'll just try not to do too much so that it doesn't seep through, but I can tell it kind of is already, but oh well, what are you going to do? Let's see what happens on the other side. Oops. 
can get a hold of it. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So I'm just going to lay it right there on the edge there and then bring it over to the other side. Oh, I like that. Okay, I don't think that's seeping through. Okay, that's coming out good. So I think besides having this up here in this corner, I'm going to put some on the back of it. And I'm going to show you how I made this little little cut edge. So you just fold your ribbon or your trim in half and then just bring your scissors over it and then it makes a nice little um what's that called? I know there's a name for it but anyway so I'm gonna just lay this here. Let's see I don't want a ton. That's probably good enough right there. And bring this up and put some Fabri-Tac on the back of this and lay that down. It seems like it's been forever since I've made a journal. I was well, actually, probably before Singapore trip. Way over a month, I've just been so busy traveling and retreats and things like that. I, I just hadn't had time, and I missed it. My sister was asking me the other day, Sherry, okay, I'm just going to lay that right there. She was saying to me, are you just going to do sewing videos? And I said, no, absolutely not. I love making journals. So I'm just going to bring that around. And then that will give that a little bit of a decorative edge. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here yet. I may actually just put some pockets in there or I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay. So that is our cover, and I like that. I think that's that's nice. I like the way it looks there, and I like the way it looks there. I may need to put a little doily or something back here. Yeah, let's see. I've got that like that. I'm going to go through my stash and see if I can find something to put here. Okay, what I've decided to do is put this little piece of tatting there. And what I'm going to do is a trick that I've seen other people do is you put the glue on your hand. And I'm using the PVA glue this time. And you just spread it around a little bit. So it's all over the back of your hand. And then you take your piece and you lay it on your hand and it will pick up the glue in all those spots. And then you just lift it up and lay it down. I hope this is going to adhere. Seems like when I bring my hand over it, it lifts it up. But okay, now I think it's starting to adhere a little bit. So as I was editing the video, I realized that I laid the piece of tatting with the glue right side up instead of down on the book. No wonder it wouldn't glue down. You must have been yelling at me. You have it on there wrong. 
you remember putting glue on the back of your hands or on your fingers when you were in school and then it was so much fun to peel off? Okay, I think that's working. Oops. Oh, I don't know. It may not work. I may have to put Fabri-Tac. I, you know what? That's not working. Okay, we learned something new. Let's put a little Fabri-Tac back there. That just doesn't seem to be, yeah, it's, it's picking up as to where with the Fabri-Tac, it's, it'll stay down. We learned that if you want something to glue, you got to put the glue side down. Let's clean that nozzle off there. Okay, we will run some Fabri-Tac over the thicker parts. Just looping it around. I suppose that works with die cut small pieces, but it definitely didn't do it with this lace. Yeah. See already I can tell that's that's definitely better. That's not lifting up. I tell you, the Fabri-Tac is a good glue. It works. Oh, I love that. Isn't that pretty? That just little piece of tatting there. Okay, we're going to just, and I'm going to leave these strings hanging like that. Okay, we're going to just leave that to dry. The next thing I want to do is add some decorative elements on the edges of this cover. And I, I like these. Um, they're not your traditional book corners. And sometimes these are better because the traditional ones go around the corner. And sometimes they're too small to fit if it's a thick book. But these are nice because you can still see them. It gives the impression of the book corner but um, it doesn't like cause a problem with going over the edge. I will link these in the description box below if you want to order some. They come in four different colors. This is the antique one. I think there's a silver and a gold one and um, brass, but anyway, so I'm going to put a fair amount of glue here, and I'm using the E6000, and I'm going to lay it down, and then I'm going to put a clip over it just to hold it in place. Actually, that's, that's holding pretty good, but I still am going to put a clip down there. I hope it doesn't glue the clip to the book. We'll see. <laughs> oh... I probably don't need as much glue as I'm putting on here. There we go. It is a sticky glue, that's for sure. Yeah, that really does push down there. I'm going to take a baby wipe and kind of clean some of that off around there. Because it's oozing out over here. There we go. I'm going to look here real close and see. No, that's pretty good, but I am going to lift that up. Yeah. It is oozing a little bit. I just don't want that um, clip to stick. There we go. Yeah, I think 
look good. Boy, that sure pushes that glue down out when you press that, put that clip on there. Okay, I'm going to turn it around and do the other side. Take that glop off there. That's really going to add an, a nice element there. coming up on the corner, so I'm going to have to put another couple of clips there. It does seem to dry pretty quickly because right here where it's coming out right now, that already seems a little bit on the dry side. These are really nice. Oops, see, it moved too. Oh yeah, I gotta be careful with that. That glue went right through there. So the type of closure I like to use is one similar to this that I used on my, um, this was a prayer journal, and uh, I have a video on that. Let me just show you the kind of neat thing about this prayer journal is the, the slide lights up. There's a video on that. But I like this kind of closure where all you do is lift up the bow. You don't have to untie it. And so I'm going to do the same thing on this journal I'm working on right here. So you just have to find the middle of your book. And actually, I'm going to turn it this way so I can write in there and I'm going to take a little pencil and the book is I think it's 11 and a half inches my unfortunately my ruler the the colors coming off but I believe that is 11 and that would be 11 and a half and then that would be 12 I could just mark that like that. So 11 and a half, half of that would be um, at the five and seven eighths or five and three fourths area, about there. So let's just make a mark there. 
five and three fourths, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this other side, just so I kind of know about where I need to make my hole. And as long as they are about the same on each side, we're going to be okay. Go up a little bit. just about there. So then what I do is I take my big bite, which is this nice big thing, and I punch my hole. It's already set on the bigger one right there. You can change the distance here with this and I like because if you had to do a hole way over here it would fit in as to where the handheld one it only goes as far as this so if you're going to invest in um, we are memory keepers hole punch and eyelet setter Spend the money and use get that big one right off the bat. So it's very easy to do. You just bring in your book and I look I have from the side, I center it up. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but I just center it up where I marked it on the, sorry for the noise, on the cover, and then pull it through, and you see that, that did a nice hole there. I could just take this and pull that out. And then we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. So line it up. I kind of come in from the side so I can see. And let's see here. There's, I need to take my pokey tool. There's some of that cardboard stuck in there, so I need to pull that out. Because otherwise it might not punch the hole. There we go. See that big chunk came out there. All right. Now let's do it. So I just line it up. Kind of eyeballing it. And that did that. And then I also want to put now an eyelet there to cover that. And so I just put my eyelet there. It'd be nice if I had some really long eyelets, but I don't but this will still work. So now to put the eyelet, let me show you this. You use this little thing. So it comes down and it sets the eyelet. So I need to bring this up to the top and then that makes that mechanism come down, okay? So you just line, put the eyelet in, you line up that little, Thing there. Oops. Kind of hard to see from the side. I think I got it. And then I'm just going to stand up and push. See, doesn't that look a lot neater? Much better. It does come through on this side a little bit, but the ribbon is going to hide that. So 
I don't have to do it there. Now, what I do for these fasteners is I use the Tim Holtz Ideology Hitch Fasteners. I'm going to show you them. So there's the little card. So I remember, you know, what they are called. And there's various colors. I think there's three different colors. There's kind of a silver, again, a brass antique. But I love these. And um, I will link those in the description box also for you guys. But look at how neat they are. So they're, they're two pieces. You just unscrew it. And you put it through there. You see the hole there? And then you flip it over. And you just take this part and you just screw it in. And if you need to, there is a, a place for a screwdriver there to uh, make it tighter. But I think that's pretty tight right there. So isn't that fantastic? Love those things. And then for the closure itself, I wasn't sure if I wanted the greenish color, let me pull this up. I think that would add some nice color in there because it's got that green there. My other option was this really dark color, but I think I'm gonna go for the light green one. And now if I can remember how I did this. Oops, sorry, that bumped over. As I recall, I brought it through. I'm going to have to look back here on my other one. Yeah, I looped it through. I think it took me a little while to figure this one out. So I looped it through here. And you can just take your pokey tool to help get it through. I double looped it. Yeah. And then I brought it through. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then I pulled it taut. Okay. And then I tied my bow. Like that. Oh, I like the green with that. That looks good. So then I tied my bow. Let me bring it down a little bit. I almost wish this was a little bit thicker. And then all you have to do is loop this. How did I do that again? I think I had to do a couple of knots. Yeah, I had to, let's see, tie it. Let me undo that again. So like that. And then I had to do another knot just to have the loop that goes there. That's right. So, and I want to make sure that it's long enough so that if the journal really expands, like I want it to probably go to about there. So I need to do that knot at least like that. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I might even go a little bit bigger in case the journal really expands. I want to make sure. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. So then I tie that knot into a double knot so it doesn't move.
there we go okay okay and then I tie my bow so that's going to go like that and it will hold it there once this is filled up it will be more than enough so just to make sure I have plenty of sari silk because I can always trim this off if it's too uh, too long and just use it for a closure I'm just gonna make sure that's extra long okay so that is the closure just goes flip oops it's easier when the book is full just hold my hand in there okay yeah and then if if need be I could even put more in there like some reddish color but anyway okay even when you think you might be done with something you may not be done with it what I ended up doing as I was putting this other piece of sari silk away I thought what if I double loop them and have both colors in there so that's what I did. I came back and put two of them in there and I will finagle with that and make it pretty. Once I get all my signatures in there, it will make it a little bit easier. So anyway, so now I have both colors of Sorry Silk in there. So that is the cover for my uh, Italian journal. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And in our next video, we will start filling pages for this and um, go from there. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Bye-bye. See you soon.